rejoice, right? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> good morning. Good morning. See, good morning, Tom. Good morning, Katie. Hey, Good morning. Good morning. Sounds good. Can you all hear me? Where's Luke? Nice. Good. Oh, there he is. Well, the, uh, the Brett Kavanaugh uh, nomination is finally done. Didn't, didn't think it would ever end, did you? It's just week after week of turmoil and turmoil. I've never seen this kind of turmoil since the war in Vietnam. But uh, threats being made against senators and people holding up violent signs and doing all kinds of crazy things. <laughs> During the, during the Senate hearing yesterday, I was listening to people just scream and yell while they're reading off a road call. It was just, it was just, it was just a, a, a big mess, and I'm, I'm so glad it's over. But the one, uh, the one shining light throughout all of this was uh, Brett Kavanaugh's daughter. I, I, it's L-I-Z-A. I don't know if it's Lisa or, or, Light or Lisa. But uh, she said that she wants to pray for the woman that was uh, bringing these charges against Kavanaugh. What a, what a breath of fresh air that was. No one else Jesus said... Uh, Suffer the little children to come unto me, for it's of such is the kingdom of God. So it's purity and, and, and innocence of those children. And it's just, it's, it's wonderful to see a child being brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now, we don't know what our life is going to turn out to be. Uh, we all stray. I mean, we all walk with Christ. And we do our best, but sometimes we stray. But sometimes when we stray, that, uh, that strain does not thwart the plan of God. Well, last week we started a discussion on uh, Samson, and uh, if you remember the story, the angel of the Lord came down and visited Samson's wife, and uh, she was she was barren, she couldn't produce a child, but then the Lord miraculously produced a child, and they were going to bring that child up to, in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and he's going to be the savior of Israel from the Philistines. And so we want to continue that story this morning and by turning to Judges chapter 14. I'm going to ask Tom to read it. Judges chapter 14, if you will. Judges 14, yes, sir. Uh, Samson's marriage. Uh, Samson went down to Timnah and saw there a young Philistine woman. When he returned, he said to his father and mother, I've seen a Philistine woman in Timnah. Now get her for me as my wife. His father and mother replied, Isn't there an acceptable woman among your relatives or among all our people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson said to his father, Get her for me. She's the right one for me. His parents did not know that this was from the Lord, who was seeking on occasion to confront the Philistines, for at that time they were ruling over Israel. Samson went down to Timnah together with his father and mother. As they approached the vineyards of Timnah, suddenly a young lion came roaring toward him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power, so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands as he might have torn a young goat. But he told neither his father nor his mother what he had done. Then he went down and talked with the woman, and he liked her. Some time later, when he went back to marry her, he turned aside to look at the lion's carcass, and it was a swarm of bees and some honey, which he scooped out with his hands and ate as he went along. When he rejoined his parents, he gave them some, and they ate too. But he did not tell them that he had taken the honey from the lion's carcass. Now his father went down to see the woman, and Samson made a feast there, as was customary for bridegrooms. When he appeared, he was given thirty companions. Let me tell you a riddle, Samson said to them. If you can give me the answer within the seven days of the feast, I will give you thirty linen garments and thirty sets of clothes. If you can't tell me the answer, you must give me thirty linen garments and thirty sets of clothes. Tell us your riddle, they said. Let's hear it. He replied, out of the eaters something to eat, out of the strong something sweet. For three days they could not give the answer. On the fourth day, they said to Samson's wife, Coax your husband into explaining the riddle for us, or we will burn you and your father's household to death. Could you invite us here to rob us? And Samson's wife threw herself on him, sobbing. You hate me. You don't really love me. You've given my people a riddle, but you haven't told me the answer. I haven't even explained it to my father or mother, he replied. So why should I explain it to you? She cried the whole seven days of the feast. So on the seventh day, he finally told her because she continued to press him. She turned and explained the riddle to her people. Before sunset on the seventh day, 
The men of the town said to him, What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? Samson said to them, If you have not plowed with my heifer, you would not have solved my riddle. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. He went down to Ashkelon, struck down thirty of their men, stripped them of their belongings, and gave their clothes to those who had explained the riddle. Burning with anger, he went up to his father's house, and Samson's wife was given to the friend who had attended him at his wedding. Samson's vengeance on the Philistines. Thanks, Tom. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your love and your grace, Lord. And uh, our Father, we, we pray that, uh, that we understand that there's nothing that we can do that could ever thwart the plans of God, Lord. Help us to know and understand that and take, take our strength in that. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a, uh, a battle going on in France right now. They want to make Arabic part of the, uh, the school system, that, uh, a language that uh, all of the children need to, need to learn. The, the thinking is that if, if all the children and everybody in France can learn Arabic, then nobody's going to confuse them with these, extreme, these Muslim extremists who will never be able to take advantage of people because they, they can, don't understand the Quran. Other people, the other people in France are looking and saying, you're, you're, you're allowing Muslims to take over our country. There's massive immigration. And it, they're just, there's just great fear that this town is going to take over France. They're losing their, their, their cultural identity. That may be uh, what's behind what we read in the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 7. God says that uh, he doesn't want the children of Israel to take on, take on uh, uncircumcised women, uncircumcised men, to take, to take on people of, uh, that are uncircumcised. It's, it's like in, in, the book of, in the book of Exodus, it's likened into a very grievous sin to uh, marry, marry uh, into, into another culture and contaminate the culture of Israel. Samson has uh, obviously become a young man, and he goes down to Timnah. Now, Timnah is a city in the, Philist in the Philistine area. And he's, uh, he's, he's, uh, he sees a, a, a woman that he's, he finds very fetching. Now, he doesn't give a lot of detail about it, whether he want to introduce himself or ask her what her zodiac sign was or some kind of, some, some, some kind of way of introducing himself. We've given very vague details about it, but he's, he's, he's taken up with her. And he decides to go back to his mom and dad and ask, ask if they would go down and get the girl's uh, hand in marriage. And then, in that culture, the parents arranged a marriage. And so he went back and got his mom and dad. His mom and dad were appalled at what he was doing. He said, you, you, can't, you can't marry somebody from the uncircumcised. Uh, they're, they're not Canaanites, but they're just as bad. They're, they're Philistines. God would not want you to want you to do that. And yet he continues to do it. So they relent and they go down to Timnah. And he's walking through the, uh, through the vineyard, and a lion attacks him. And the Spirit of the Lord comes upon him. And we didn't talk about that too much about Samson's great strength. Uh, but we'll get into it in further detail later. But uh, he kills the lion, and then they head down to Timnah, where he marries the girl. And there's still the attendants at the wedding ceremony. And uh, they all seem to be Philistines, but there doesn't seem to be any Israelites involved in it at all. So Samson has, has violated God's law by marrying this, this Philistine woman. Furthermore, he violates the Nazarite, the Nazarite Creed. Do you all know the Nazarite? Do you know the three, the three parts of the Nazarite Creed? If you don't know the three parts of the Nazarite Creed, you're a bad person. You really are. <laughs> last week, that's okay. I struggled with this thing. But there's three parts. The, the, the one is that's it. You, 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 you don't touch anything from the vine. You, know, you don't touch alcohol because your, your, your joy comes from the Lord. You don't touch a dead body because that's, uh, that doesn't reflect well on God. It's, it's unclean. It doesn't reflect, it doesn't reflect God. And you don't cut your hair. It's, it's a sign that you're not, conforms, you're not conforming to this world. So Samson, so Samson uh, has taken the Nazarite creed, but he, but he violates it. I guess the question I have to say is that what's he doing in the vineyard anyway? You know, possibly, I mean, the text doesn't say it, but it's possibly that, he, that, he's, that he's consuming, consuming grapes or something. And he goes down and, uh, and he goes down to Tim and on his way back home. He, he finds the lion. Remember, he, he killed the lion. And he finds the lion. He finds he finds bees in the lion, which is kind of unnatural. You think you think of worms or some kind of uh, parasite in, in the lion, but he finds bees in the lion. The bees have created honey, so he takes. He takes the honey out of the lion. 
which is what? Touching a dead corpse, t touching a corpse, <coughs> touching a dead body. Again, so he violated the, the, uh, the Nazarite Creed. So he violated the Nazarite Creed by touching a dead body, by going to the vineyard. And then when he has the, uh, he has a feast, there's a seven day feast for, for the wedding. And the, the word feast there is related to the word to drink. So there's, there's, there's drink going on in the day. The implication is that he's drinking, that he's drinking wine. He's, so he's, so he's, he's done one thing. He's, he's violated, he's, he's, he's violated God's law by, by taking a Nazareth, a Philistine woman. And he's violated God's law by breaking the Nazareth code. I want to ask, uh, the, the key, to, the key to understanding this, this, this whole idea is that, that God is, is in verse four. Would you reverse? Would you get verse four again? His parents did not know that this was from the Lord who was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines, for at that time they were ruling over Israel. But what that text is saying is that you can't violate God's law. You know, you, you, even when you fall into sin, you don't. God knows his mind, God knows his heart, God knows what he's going to do, and God's going to work that into his plan. My wife and I like to play this little game. She's got the little, I don't know, I don't know little cell phone. She's got a, a, little, a little word game we play once in a while. The word, the, the letters come up, and then we have to find a word that that, uh, that fits, fits fits those letters. And we we have a lot of fun with it. But word games are fun, and riddles are fun though too. In the ancient world, people used used riddles, and they used them quite quite often. If you remember uh, the Queen of Sheba going down and, and seeing sin, Solomon, what does she do? She brings him, she brings him a, a, a riddle. So people, people are, are fond of riddles, and Samson is fond of riddles. So he comes up with this riddle. He says, uh, chapter, first 14, can you read 14 again? 14. Yes, sir. Here, he replied, out of the eater something to eat, out of the strong something to something sweet. For three days, they could not give the answer. They struggled with this riddle. I mean, I guess my question is why they even, why did they even consent to it? He said that if you can solve this riddle, I'll give you 30 pieces, 30 changes of clothing. Apparently, these were probably the, the, you know, very expensive pieces of articles of clothes. And, uh, and but if, if you can't solve it, you owe me 30, 30 articles of clothing. Why they would take that up, I don't know. Probably because they've been, have been drinking or something. But the, they, they can't come up with the answer. So. What do they do? They threaten his wife. They say that if you don't come up, if you don't, if you don't get the answer from your husband, we're going to burn your house down, you and your and your father, and we're going to kill you all. So she goes back and she pleads with him and cajoles him and to give her the answer to the riddle. And, and he says something very interesting to her. He says that I haven't even given the answer to my parents. Why should I give it to you? And indicating his, his parents are closer to him, to, to her than him. Well, she, she, she cajoles him and cries and cries and finally she gives him the answer to the puzzle. And what does she do? She turns around and she gives the answer to the, to the Philistines. And so they come up to him and say, what is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? So they knew the answer. And, and Samson now has to pay them. He has to pay them the clothing. So what does he do? In his anger, he goes down and he kills 30, 30 Philistine men. But his answer is, 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 is interesting too. He says, if you had not plowed my if you had not plowed with my heifer, you would have never found out the answer. Interesting thing to say. So anyway, he gets the clothing and he pays and he pays and pays them off. But what's fascinating is that God knew and understand that uh, God's plan was to, to, to rid the area of the Philistines. And he used Samson's free will and his his his, uh, his own sin to do it. So God uses, God's, God's plans cannot be thwarted by, by any one man, but they also can't be thwarted by any group of people to talk about this. He you to read chapter 15 if you would. Later on, <clears throat> at the time of wheat harvest, Samson took a young goat and went to visit his wife. He said, I'm going to my wife's room, but her father would not let him go in. I was so sure you thoroughly hated her, he said, that I gave her to your friend. Isn't her younger sister more attractive? Take her instead. Samson said to them, This time I have a right to get even with the Philistines. I will really harm them. 
So he went out and caught 300 foxes and tied them tail to tail in pairs. He then fastened a torch to every pair of tails, lit the torches, and let the foxes loose in the standing grain of the Philistines. He burned up the shocks and standing grain, together with the vineyards and olive groves. When the Philistines asked who did this, they were told, Samson, the Timonite's son-in-law, because his wife was given to his friend. So the Philistines went up and burned her and her father to death. Samson said to them, Since you've acted like this, I won't stop until I get my revenge on you. He attacked them viciously and slaughtered many of them. Then he went down and stayed in the cave in the rock of Etham. The Philistines went up camped in Judah, spreading out near Lehi, the men of Judah asked, Why have you come to fight us? We have come to take Samson prisoner, they answered, to do to him as he did to us. Then 3,000 men from Judah went down to the cave in the rock of Edom and said to Samson, Don't you realize that the Philistines are rulers over us? What have you done to us? He answered, I merely did to them what they did to me. They said to him, We've come to tie you up and hand you over to the Philistines. Samson said, Swear to me that you won't kill me yourselves. Agreed, they answered. We will only tie you up and hand you over to them. We will not kill you. So they bound him with two new ropes and led him up from the rock. As he approached Lehi, the Philistines came toward him shouting. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. The ropes on his arms became like charred flax, and the bindings dropped from his hands. Finding a fresh jawbone of a donkey, he grabbed it, and struck down a thousand men. And Samson said, With a donkey's jawbone I have made donkeys of them. With a donkey's jawbone I have killed a thousand men. When he finished speaking, he threw away the jawbone, and the place was called Ramath Lehi. Because he was very thirsty, he cried out to the Lord, You have given your servant this great victory. Must I now die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? Then God opened up the hollow place in Lehi, and water came out of it. When Samson drank, his strength returned, and he revived. So the spring was called en Hakor, and it is still there in Lehi. Samson led Israel for 20 years in the days of the Philistines. We've uh, been following the, the, the Brexit controversy in England. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the Brexit means Britain exiting the European common market. I guess the question I have is, uh, why would anybody even want to be in it? There's a hefty fee, there's a hefty fee to be in it. Uh, you only can trade with certain people. They, they require you to take a certain number of immigrants into your country. And you really, you really lost, you basically lost the sovereignty of your country. Why would anybody do that? We see that happening here in this chapter too, with the men of Judah are willing to relent the sovereignty of their country. Samson goes back to his father-in-law to, uh, to begin the marriage of his wife, with his wife. And he says to his father-in-law, he wants to go up and see his wife now. And his father-in-law says, she's not here. I, uh, I gave her to your, to, 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 to was essentially the bridegroom, or the, 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 the groomsman. And Samson is, is, is kind of furious with him. Uh, and uh, so, so, so the father says to him, why don't you take his younger sister? She's much prettier than, 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 than your wife. That's what this poor woman's gone through. This, her husband has more allegiance to his parents than she does. He calls her a, a heifer. He brings her. He, his, his gift to her on wedding day is, is a goat. And now and, and, and then his, her father tells, tells him, tells him that, that his younger sister is prettier than she is. But, but Samson is absolutely furious at that. And he says he's going to take out his, his anger on the, on the Philistines. So the text says that he grabs a number of foxes and ties them, ties their, their tails together. Some commentators believe that uh, they're jackals, not, not foxes, because the word for jackal and the word for fox in Hebrews is the same word. And jackals come, come, in, come in groups rather than fox. Foxes are just very solitary animals. But whatever, he's, he's taken this group of these animals and he's burned down their fields. He's burned the vineyards and their, their, their wheat fields. And which is which is really punishable by death. So the Philistines are angry with him, and they, they confront they confront uh, three thousand Judahites. 
what's fascinating about this situation is the Judites side with the Philistines. They said that the, the, the Philistines control our country. You know, we, we can't do anything against them. So they, they, they go against Samson, and they want to take Samson and take him down and, and take him to the Philistines. And Samson says, okay, you can do that, just one thing, don't kill me, just tie me up and hand me over to the, to the Philistines. So they tie him up and they hand him over to the Philistines. And immediately he breaks the balance uh, of the ties, and then he, he immediately kills a thousand more Philistines. So, in other words, the plans, the plans of God cannot be thwarted by any group of men. So, what do, what, do we, what do we take out of this? What do we take out of this passage? I guess the thing that, that we can take out of it is that God has made plans in our lives. He's made a plan for you and a plan for me and a plan for, plan for all of us here that can't be thwarted by any, any, any sin or any, anything that a man does. Our plans might not work out the way we, we, we think they should work out, but God's got it all under his control. He's going he's, he's to bring us home to heaven someday. The other thing I would take out is, is, uh, is put, your, put your whole mind, heart, and soul into pursuing God, not yourself. As we look at the life of Samson, we see a man that's very selfish. We see a man that's, that's willing to put forth this riddle that's, that's impossible to solve just so he can get clothes. The only time he really obeys God is when, he's, when, he's, when he seems to be angry. And, uh, so we, what we need to do is, in other words, to do is treat your wife well, too. <laughs> the way he treats his wife is an, is an admirable leader. So that's what I think we can learn from this passage. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your grace and your love, Lord. And, uh, thank you for the life of Samson, Lord. And help us to learn from it, Lord. And learn that you are indeed sovereign. And the, the sins of any man cannot thwart the plans of God. That we need to concentrate and focus on you, Lord, and not our own selfishness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Sure.